Hi everyone, my name is Bernardo and today I'm going to be talking about a work I did with Silvana Pesenti from Toronto and Rodrigo Targino from FGV on a portfolio problem that leads to an optimization problem. So a portfolio problem typically is to decide how much we're going to invest in several assets that we have in our disposition. And the asset returns are typically modeled by random variables. And therefore, the losses of the portfolio are also random variables. And the way to integrate that into the model and into an optimization problem is going to be the main focus here today. So the investment strategy that we're going to choose is called the risk budgeting portfolio. It takes a risk measure to evaluate the risk of the random losses of the portfolio. So that this, this part and the risk contribution is a marginal part weighted by how much we have invested in that asset. So this is the risk contribution of the ith asset on the risk of the portfolio. And the risk budgeting portfolio assigns to each one of the assets how much risk we want invested into that. So that's the risk budgeting portfolio, and this is a system of nonlinear equations into the unknowns A. And what's interesting is that in several cases we can have this problem equivalent to an optimization problem, which is to minimize the risk of the portfolio subject to what is known as a risk budgeting constraint. And it takes the log of the investments multiplied by the risk budget that we have allocated. So this problem leads to the solution to the other one, but unfortunately, minimizing such a black box function is very hard. In general, there's no explicit formula for the risk of the random losses. And the main issue here is that the random losses can be very tricky to deal with given the investment decision A. So to fix our problem, we are going to choose the average value at risk as the risk measure. So the optimization problem becomes this one, where we have here the random losses and the constraint. And what we're going to do to make this problem more concrete is to sample future returns to evaluate this expectation. So we're going to take J samples for the random returns, and then we approximate the problem by this giant sum here over capital J uh, scenarios. So this problem has D plus one variables, a single constraint, but the objective function can be quite large since it has D times J terms. And what happens is that if the dimensions are not too big, we can give it to some solvers. So we had first, a Python implementation in CVXPy that called SCS as the solver. And since this is a first order solver, it didn't get very much precision on larger instances, say with more scenarios or a higher dimension. So we moved to a jump implementation using IPOPT. There we got more precision and a reasonably equivalent time. And essentially because IPOPT is a second order solver, which uses uh, more information on the problem. But that was still not so nice since we wanted to evaluate 3,000 times in a row the same problem with minor modifications, essentially changing the samples that we have for returns corresponding to different things. That would take four hours, and we decided to roll our own uh, implementation of uh, solver for that specific kind of problem. So what we did is that we took the objective function here and replaced by a single variable theta, which is going to be an estimate of the objective function. And to get better estimates, we're going to include several constraints here, which are going to transform theta into a piecewise linear estimate. And to build these estimates here, we need to calculate the value of the function and gradients. And that was very easily done in Julia to take forward diff to calculate the, the gradients of the objective function. So that was one really big win for us. And then we stop when the estimate theta that we have here using the inequalities is close enough to the objective that we can calculate. So this is a smaller problem. It has D plus two variables and K plus one constraints. So that's easier to solve. And this one we're going to send to IPOPT. And on the other hand, we have to do some managing uh, around the problem. So we need bounds on variables. And in practice, we found out that giving a sufficiently nice bound on T speeds up convergence. And that was where jump really shined for us because we were able to experiment with several uh, constraints on T that made our problem more uh, efficient to solve. And another thing that we discovered is that we 
could replace the objective function and estimate only the random part and split t, which is deterministic, outside of the estimates, and we were able to get much more precision on the solver. So, and the first thing we redid all this test, and then we got a very small time for solution and a very good precision. And it was interesting to notice that on this 19 dimensional problem, we got stuck on a precision that's probably related to precision of another algorithm that was running to solve each one of the smaller instances. And it was stuck around 1e to the minus 8. And we didn't manage to lower that down. Even though we tried changing some options for the lower solver, we didn't get there. So maybe there are some other options that we have to look into. But with all that, we did what we wanted to do. So do that for several days in a row where we fit a model, we generate samples, we calculate the portfolio and we do that all over again. The model fitting was done in R and it was offline. And the optimization we packed into the CVAR Risparity package, which is available in Julia. And we got some memory issues by doing this procedure uh, several times. And what, what we see here is that if we do not do garbage collection manually, memory goes down quite fast and stays low, not zero, but relatively low. If we don't do that very often, say at every 100 iteration, memory stays down here at the 400 went up. But if you do either every time or at every 10 iterations, memory consumption is not that bad. So one surprise is that doing at every 100 iterations for me should have gone upwards here, but it didn't go. So maybe memory got lost somewhere between Julia, Jump, and IP opt, I don't know. And on the other side of that is doing garbage collection every time takes a lot of time. So iterations for that take more time. And if we don't do that much often, then we get uh, very good results on timing, which is remarkably different here. So we, we were happy to use forward diff from Julia inside of jump. And we were able also to experiment with several formulations of our problem to get higher precision. And unfortunately, we ran in some memory and garbage collection issues, which were not completely know how to solve, but we will be happy to have uh, questions and feedback from you. Thank you.